Perfect. I think thank you very much, guys, to to, to join this this session, and particularly on, on your weekend. Um, I'll quickly start with my brief introduction so that we'll we'll know. I mean, who we are. My name is Bantu Kumar, and I have been associated with uh, UiPath com community for quite a long. I mean, perhaps uh, from 2018, late 2018 till now, and I'm also a chapter lead for Pune. At the same time, I have a full-time employee of Globant India, and there I'm the practice lead for RPA. Okay. And today's topic, which we are covering is UiPath Test Suite and how this is going to be helpful to automate your enterprise applications as well as enterprise RPAs. Okay. This I have planned in the form of series, and this is going to be the first session of the, of the series. In the meantime, if you have any questions while we are discussing, uh, you could put your question on the chat window, or we can we can take that uh, during the discussion too. Okay. Okay. So this suit, okay, uh, UiPath RPS. I'm audible, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was just checking. Yeah. So this suit provides. Uh, two paths for testing, automation testing. One says that you can automate your traditional software application using the UiPath test automation framework. On the other hand, we can also automate the testing of RPA robots that we are building with the help of UiPath tool. Okay. There are little difference between them. The first one is more for automated testing of features and implementations of traditional softwares. Let's say you want to test specific, um, let's say you have a software for uh, uh, ITS, and let's say ServiceNow, and uh, you are building something on ServiceNow, you want to test it, like we do for traditional automation testing using Selenium or any other tools. And this is one of the option, or one of the, the tool that you, you can leverage for the same reason. However, in the today's discussion, we will be focusing more on RPA testing, right? If you really see in the entire journey of RPA, I mean, testing and testing team has been the underrated team and then group, right? Because we, we think once we build the RPA solutions, that's enough. If it is running, that's enough. We don't have to, to really test the way we, we test our traditional software and that is something is not really helpful in terms of scaling RPA. So it is okay if you are trying to automate one or two process, but in the case of enterprise solutions where you may have to automate more than 100 process and you may have hundreds of robots running on your platform, then losing testing aspect could be very, very impactful and could, could fail your entire automation journey. And that is why I have brought up, uh, up with this, this topic of RPA testing and how we can leverage UiPath itself to do the same. Okay. Let's quickly look at what all components we have and with which we, what we could do in terms of uh, testing. Either it is automated software testing or RPA testing. So it comes with four major components. The first component is test manager, which is altogether a separate component like we have orchestrator. Here you can manage all the activities related to our, uh, related to testing, okay? And it is again, it is more useful for traditional software automated testing. Then there is another version of studio, which we use for automation, what we call is pro studio pro, which is more advanced, and with this, you could automate as well as you could also test your uh, right test cases for your automation. Orchestrator, we are aware of. I mean, this is there because you can control your test cases and you can run your test cases from orchestrator. And the last but not the least is robots. That's where your automation runs. That's where your test suits run. Okay. And with these four combination of offerings, we can actually this is not the, the, the comprehensive list, but this is all we can test 
and automate the, the testing. Okay, I mean, if you can see, it also include RPA testing. You could automate all the manual testing that you do with traditional uh, software applications, desktop applications, web applications, Citrix, API, and many more, right? Now, as I, as I told you, today's topic would be more to focus towards RPA testing. Okay, how we will leverage RPA for our testing. Okay, the whole idea of RPA testing is to to make sure that the quality of the RPA automation remains well, even if there are some changes and there are some dynamics in either in the underlying application. Let's say you are automating any web application. If there is a change, there is an upgrade, then you are well ensured by using this test automation that all your activities, all your logic are working fine with all those dynamics, okay? Perhaps you may like to have some addition in your RP automation script. In that case too, you want to ensure that none of the other activities or sequence of activities or workflows has impacted with, with that reason. And that is why if you, Automate this, your effort will be saved a lot because you don't have to go and test it manually. So with RP testing, what we could do is we can define the input. We can also define the expected result and we can actually compare them to ensure this is, this is producing the intended result. Okay. So, okay, how, how we do that? Okay. In order to do that, uh, if you have seen UiPath Studio, I'll, I'll switch to, to UiPath Studio for, for instance. This is the, the traditional UiPath Studio which you see, okay? Now, in general, you won't see this option. Is there something? Okay. Yeah. In general, you may not see this option, test automation. By default, what will happen, you would be provided with process library and templates and these is your options. However, because I am in the studio pro, I am able to see this test automation part two. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to go to settings, you need to go to license and profiles and from license and profiles, you have to click view or change profiles. Okay. Now here you see multiple options. You can use our traditional UiPath Studio, which is meant for uh, automations. If you know about UiPath Studio X, which is like citizenship automation for business user, right? With less complexity, very less complexity, low code platform to allow business user to automate. UiPath Studio is our traditional automation studio. Pro is something allows you to more advanced automation strategies. And you could actually also leverage test suits and test cases with this studio. And that is what I have, we have to do. You have to click on this. Once you do that, if you go back to your home page, sorry, start page, you will start seeing this option, test automation. Okay, now this option sometimes won't be there in your profile selection. And if it is not visible, perhaps you may see this and this too. Nothing more than that. The problem of, or, or the reason for this could be your orchestrator settings, okay? So in the orchestrator, what you need to ensure is, this is the, the latest orchestrator. If you go to your orchestrator, what will happen is you will see the profile with the user you are logged in. So I'll go to my tenant and in tenant, I'll go to manage accesses and the user you use to log into your orchestrator this is the user I, I used. From here, you will go to this and say, edit permission. And here it's, it's a wizard. You just select this, this looks all good. We'll go and see the next option. Here you have to select which type of license you want to allow for this user, the user that I have logged in with. Okay, so I'm logged in with this user. Okay, Bantu Kumar. And the email ID is .kumar.global.com. Uh, now, if you look at my orchestrator here for this user, I have given this RPA developer pro license. 
and this is because I could see this option there. Otherwise, you may not see this. Okay. Now, once you have this, what all we could do or what all we see. So let's go and see what all options we start seeing it. So I have created a, a demo project for you guys just to see what all we could do and, and save some time for our, our discussion. So I'll open that project for you. I'll go to the start option and this is the project what I have created. Okay. So this is a standard process which we have, uh, which I have created. What it does, it goes to a web application, it logins and, and, and log out, that's all. So perhaps if I run it, and I'll run it for you. Okay. I'll run it. Okay. It has opened the, the robot and it will open browser. Let's see if there is something wrong with this. No, it's working. Okay, so this is a dummy page. It will put the username and password. It will log in, and it it will close the browser, and that's it. That's that's the, the simple, straightforward uh, flow that that I have created. Okay, now let's say what I want to do is I want to test. I want to create test cases for for this process so that in future if there are any change in in the application that i was logging into or if i want to add any additional feature into this okay for example in login uh, apart from username and password there is a new addition where we need to provide some sort of uh, key or or any id or or additional information in order to log in in that case you may have to modify your existing xaml file existing logic so let's let's say this is my this is my page where i have created the, the entire logic for login and password okay now what i need to do is i need to create test cases for this one so that in future if there are any change we can simply run that test case and ensure my flows are well intact and working okay so to do that with this new edition of studio pro where we are uh, we have an opportunity to, to create test cases. What we, we will see is if you want to test, uh, create a test case for your XAML file, okay, you can right click on it and you can say create test cases. Okay, once you say create test cases, what we'll do is it will prompt you to specify a few, a few values. So first of all, your test case name, okay, and the location of your test case. After that, if you have any test data that you want to provide, let's say uh, you want to uh, write a test case for uh, any input form, okay, where where a, a kind of information required, right? And you have an Excel sheet or a CSV file from where you could you want to provide the data. So you, you can provide these data here, and that will be leveraged in the uh, actual test case which which it will create. So let, let me create a dummy one for you guys, and then I'll, I'll show you what I have created uh, for the demo. So let's say I'll say demo, so login, okay? Uh, in order to differentiate and in order to manage, what I do is I prefix this file name with TC, okay? So that I could understand this is a test case file. Additionally, what I do follow is I mention what I am going to test is, okay? So let's say login I am going to, to test. Additionally, what I recommend is to organize your test cases in a separate folder, okay? For each each uh, application or each feature, the way you want to organize. For example, let's say this is login to my web application. What I'll do is I'll create a folder. Here I'll create a folder called my web page. Okay, TC test cases. And inside this, I'll create the demo, TC demo login. 
I'll just remove underscore number five. And next, here currently I don't have any data, but you could you could provide as I told. You. Just create it. Now it will create a folder, and inside the folder, if you see, there would be a file again of the same extension. It is a XAML XAML file. Okay, that is why I said I you could provide. A prefix which could help you organize your file in the future, so that you can understand. Not from here, because you know here. I mean, you can identify by the icon you are seeing. But if you open the same file somewhere, it would be pretty difficult for you to really recognize whether this is a uh, test case file or a normal automation file. Okay, so that is why it is recommended that you use TC. Uh, not recommended, but but it's such a best practice that that I follow and I do recommend. Right. Now inside the, the flow, what it does, it actually automatically writes three stages or sequences for you. Is given, then, and at the middle when. So it's like with this given value, when you run your login page, then it out generates this output. Try to follow this this uh, uh, sequence. Okay. So with this given value, if you try to invoke your login. It will generate. Then it will generate this output. So, for example, if I currently want to call this value, what I'll do is there are parameters. I'll invoke the parameters and I'll provide some value there. Okay. So, in the login URL, I'll provide login URL. In the username and password, I'll provide the username and password, and I'll run it. In the second test case, what I could do is I could actually create one test case would be with a valid login one. Test case could be with invalid login. Another test case would be with invalid URL, so that you will have the complete coverage. Okay. Now it was a dummy one. I'll just save it, and I'll show you what I have created for the actual one. So what I have done: TC login to my web page, incorrect URL, and TC to my web page, all good scenario. So let's run this for you. What I'll do is, I have created this one, and I'll I'm going to run it. Let's see what it does. Okay. I will right click on it. I will say debug file. What it will do? Nothing but actually invoke that file XAML file with the given parameter, right? And it will tell me whether all these stages, sorry, the activities that is there in the uh, XAML file, the flow, were successful. And also, it will tell you. The coverage of your test case. When I say coverage, means the coverage of all the activities being used in the in the flow. So let's open that one. So here it says that uh, I'll show you something. It will tell you that whether the uh, the test was successful or not. Okay. So I'll go to. So here, if you say verification pass, the output value of ex exists true. I'll tell you how this. Uh, I mean, what this is. But you will have this value in your output, which could tell you your test run was successful. Now, if you go to your page, okay, this is very interesting, which 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 I I do really liked it. All the green one says that the test run has crossed through all these activities, and if it is green, that means it was all working. Okay, it was all fine, right? And if I go to the top of the page, you will say the activity coverage was ninety-one percent during this test run. Why ninety-one percent? Because this particular activity wasn't being executed during this. Because this is an activity which runs when your login page is not loaded pro properly, or it failed to load the, the login page. Right? That is why ninety percent. Isn't it cool? Like you, you can see all the test cases. It is pretty similar with what we do with our traditional automation testing. But here, I mean, you will have all the visibility of activities being used, and you will have visibility whether this is working with the new change, with the upgrade of your upgraded uh, upgraded system, or any any logical change in this uh, in the automation script, or in in your system underlying system, right? And now, what if I run the other one? So I'll go back to my project structure. I'll go to the incorrect URL one, okay, and I'll try to run that sequence for you, okay. So this one I'll go to all good. I ran. 
I will run this this time. So let me run this. Again, the same set of activities, but this time I have provided incorrect URL or incomplete URL. In this, I haven't provided slash login. That is why it is not on the login page. Okay, so the expected behavior was it will not see the login button and ultimately log an error and will exit. That's the expected behavior. Okay, let it finish and we'll see. It will take some time because it is trying to find that element. Even during the run, you could also go and look at the output pan to see what is happening with your but again, that's that's not something you do when your production or bots are on production. So let it run and we'll see the outcome. Okay, it, it completed the execution. It says that it, again, the test case execution was successful. Though there was a failure uh, while attempting to find the login button, right? So now let's see how the execution was. I again, on the same page, okay? Let's see how it does. Now, if you see, this time the path was different it started with this but it went in the else part of this because the login page was not loaded properly because of the incorrect url i supplied okay now with this there are so many activities which was untouched right and that is why you can see the activity coverage is in amber color which says that only 58% of the activities were covered during this execution. Now, how you can ensure that your coverage is 100% because we have, what we recommend is you write test cases for each scenario separately, right? For unsuccessful, successful, incorrect URL, incorrect username, password sometimes to validate every scenario is working and you have 100% coverage. So what you do is you create separate files. The very interesting factor here is you could actually select both of them together and you can say, I'll first close this one just to, and you can say run test cases, okay, which will run the test cases in sequence. And at the end, both the side of if and else condition will be touched and your entire coverage would be 100%. So let's try to do that. So this is all good scenario where I have the URL provided by slash login. So board was able to find the login button, it did, and now it stopped. It will again run the second scenario with the incorrect URL. And now it will fail to find the login button. So it will go to the else part of the execution. Again, because there is uh, there is an attempt which bot is trying to make uh, in order to find the element, it takes sometimes uh, a little extra to conclude. So we are done. Let's see the final outcome. Okay. It should have been here. Let's see. Okay. 
Okay. okay. Let's try to run this again. What I was hoping, it it has run, but that the report hasn't generated. So let's let's try to run this again. Debug test cases. Perhaps I mean why it, it didn't do that because I clicked on run test cases. That is why the report is is not there. So run test cases and debug are pretty different. Run is is basically it will be more relevant when you want to run these from your control room. I'll show you uh, after after this, and there you will have all the the visibility. And on top of that, uh, if you remember, there were four components. The first one was test manager, which is more solid interface to see or manage your entire test suite. Okay, and that's uh, that's something I have a plan to cover in the subsequent uh, sessions of this series. But definitely, we will also look at uh, maybe in in uh, in in future. For now, we, we will at least look at the orchestrator side of this. Now let's look at the case. Now you see, it's a hundred percent coverage. Bye. Let's go back to the output phase. Now if you see, one verification has passed and another verification has passed. And here, login page didn't. Sorry, there is a spelling correction. Load in the timely fashion. That is why. But both test cases was failed because the expected output was in the in that fashion. Now I'll show you how this is being taken care of. Okay. So this entire Test case writing is, is with, with the help of uh, a new set of activities which UiPath has launched, right? With that, you do this verification, right? So for now, just let's minimize it. And now, if you see, let's cover this path with the all good test case and this path from the incorrect URL test path. And ultimately, we have 100% coverage. So whenever you are writing test cases, you have to ensure you have 100% coverage with all the test cases that, that you have written. Don't go with, with just writing the test cases for the success scenario. It is also important that you test the failed scenario so that your entire test suit will have 100% test coverage. And in the future, if you want to test, if you want to see if the changes in the logic or underlying application will have any impact in your existing uh, activities, you will simply run it from either from control room or from uh, in the development environment in from your studio itself. And you can be very assured that nothing has impacted. Or if, if there is any impact, it will simply tell you. Okay, let's see that. What, what, what we are doing. So here I told you, this is something you know. I mean, this is invocation. The, the the part that is important, which says that how my test cases is successful or it's failed is with these three ones. So there are three activities. I'll go back to my slide actually. Let me close this one. Okay. And go here. So there are three set of activities Okay, in the new package which UiPath has, has uh, launched, it's uipath.activities.testing. I think testing.activities, which allow you to have these three activities which you could use in your test case files. So verify expression as simply as, as, as it says, you can do the comparison between two variables or two values. It's a simple expression comparison. And you can say, check whether the output of this expression compar expression value is, is true or false. This is a simpler version of this. Pretty advanced, not so advanced, but it will give you more 
opportunity to write complex expression and you can actually compare two different expression with verify expression with operator and it will have predefined operator too which you can leverage to compare your results and last is verify control attribute which is very unique because here you could use any ui automation activities to compare for example in the in the current scenario where i how i have validated my login was successful or not by checking the the icon logout icon in the subsequent phase when the successful when the login was successful i am expecting that in the next phase there is a logout button and for that check you could use this control let me show you that in the studio itself so that you see the differences for instance i'll go to activities and from activities you can look for testing okay and in testing there are two one it's verification and there is data data is, is something we'll discuss in the the subsequent series it is more for application testing that is why i am not covering here but uh, it has a couple of activities which you could use to validate few of the things random values numbers random dates there are things which you would like to test in general in the form if you want to test any form any excel value or any other value so this data one i was talking about this verification so verify control attribute expression and expression with operator let's drop the other two one i have already dropped in but let me drop one by one this one it's a simple expression you want to write like x equal to y one equal to one right that's all you could write any other expression too so it will just give you have to write the, the expression and output is going to be validated okay now the second one is you will have an opportunity to write two expression and with the help of given operator you could do the comparison for example x plus y equal to y plus z or something like this or any any other let's say the value of a string you could you could actually compare two strings too so again it's the same thing you could do or achieve the same thing with with here too but again it will provide you two separate expression and you could actually maybe a simpler version of uh, or it will be a simpler look and feel if you want to compare two different expressions together now the third one the interesting one is the verify control attribute okay this is interesting why because here in the first expression what you have i mean what you can do is you have an opportunity to drop any other activities okay so for example you could actually go and use any existing attributes for uh, activities like ui activities let's say uh, element exists or even even if condition the only criteria is it should result result into some value it can't be a read kind of control right so if there is an output of your uh, activity then you can definitely use it and you can compare it with the given expression so for example how i have used this one itself so i'll show you how i have used it let me delete this one because that is not required this one then value what i have done is as i told you to verify if the login was successful or not i am checking on the login page if the, if the logout button is visible and this is element exist which actually produce an output of type boolean which i am checking if this is true my this my test case will be marked as successful okay and if it is false this value is false this will be marked as fail in the similar fashion in the other one again i have checked if the login page is not true then it is successful okay where i have provided incorrect url so i am expecting that the login page shouldn't be visible there is a that is how you define your success scenario for your test test cases okay now with this what i'll do is i'll i'll, I'll explain a few more thing definitely is the project one now if you have seen there are test cases now what i'll do is if you know we can publish this value okay 
let's save this. If you want to run this process from your uh, orchestrator, either you have to import this one, the, the entire package, or you have to publish this to, to the orchestrator. Okay, and in order to do that, you know, I mean, how we do it. From the design section, you go to publish and you publish it, okay? Now, let's say I want to publish it. I'll select my, this one, a new version, and I'll go to my orchestrator. And next, I have no certification, I'll publish it. It will be published. Okay. Now, what will happen? It will publish all the files except these four items. All the test case type of XAML file. Why? Because this is not part of your project. If you want to make it publishable, you have to explicitly tell the studio this has to go to the orchestrator too. And in that case, you can right click on it and you can say, currently it is marked that. I'll, I'll, for now, I'll say ignore. In general, sorry. In usual scenario, when will when you will create new file, it will have this kind of icon grayed out, which says that this is cur currently local and it, it can't be published. If you want to publish it, you right click on it and you say set as publish publishable. Once you say set as publishable, and here in the drop down you see two options: publish test cases too. Okay. If you say publish, it will publish all the project file except the test cases. If you publish, click on publish and say publish test cases, it will actually publish the test cases. I'll show you where this will be visible on orchestrator. Okay, now it is published. Let's go to the orchestrator. Here, okay. Let's go to orchestrator. Okay. Now, here, if you see, this is currently, I am in default, and, uh, yeah, default folder. Okay. And in default folder, there would be along with all the other features, there is a new feature called testing. Okay. And when you click on this, similar to, to other, I mean, similar to projects and process, it will also tell you the test cases that was published. So now if you see, these test cases are also visible here. Like we have process, if you go to automation, and inside automation, you see the, the process, you can add process over here, right? From the, the pack, published packages, these are my published packages. And from here, I could select one. The one that I have published a few minutes back is this one, demo. Similar to that, what now we have is the testing. And inside testing, you can see test sets, which you can create. Test set is like, I, I told you, right? If you want to run multiple test cases together, you can create a set out of it. Okay, then you have all the test cases over here. You can actually select all of them and you can run them too. Even you can schedule them if you wish to. Okay, now you could actually from here, you can say, okay, if I want to run this one, all good. I'll say this one, I'll select the environment. Okay, I'll say execute. I mean, I could actually select the robot too. It currently, I have no robot connected, but you could actually select it because my current studio is acting as a RPA developer pro. That is why this robot is not visible. But if you have a robot, you could select the robot from here and you can say execute and it will trigger the, the process there. Okay. You have, again, test schedules too. As I told you, you could actually schedule some test cases over here by selecting. It's, it's the similar way you, you schedule your general process. So likewise, if you if you go to your original folder and from your automation, you actually, this process could be triggered from here. I can say, this is, this is actually, the, um, let's say here, I want to run it. I can again, from here, you select your schedule, the robot, and you can run it. Similarly, when you could create triggers too, Triggers is basically, again, running the item 
at a specific time or so. So all of this, right? In the similar way, you could also do things with testing here. What it will ensure that any upgrade, any modification in the existing application, you can run the, the entire set of test, uh, test cases before you deploy any, any additional change by, by ensuring all your test cases were successful. If it is successful, you are safe to say this, this new change or new package that you have received is, is okay to, uh, to deploy in your production environment. Okay, so I think that is that is something I wanted to cover for the day. But I will also look my presentation if there is anything else I have. So demo I have covered, and with that, I think with a statement, testing lead to failure definitely, but failure lead to reliability, robustness, and quality. With that quote, I would like to conclude this this discussion. And I'll open this floor for questions, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions for me. Uh, nothing from my end. But no problem. The so the environment remains same. Okay, you, you don't have to create separate environment. If you are referring to, to environment, so the way you create your uh, environment so here you could create multiple environment right and what you could do is you could dedicate one specific environment for for testing right the way this this is currently this environment is maybe i would like to call it as a development environment similarly i could create uh, uh uat and then another i could do for i mean for uh, testing and in that environment i could include robots which will which will run the, the test cases so it's very similar to, to what we have for other. What else? So this one you said, output panel, which I am saying, right? So this is, again, this is part of your studio itself. You don't have to really do or, or customize anything. What I have done is just that I have moved some of the item from bottom to, to there and, and plugged in. It, it is all already there. It's just like I have organized in a different way. And these logs are being generated by my robot. I have not written any, any of them, right? So it's just, if you add any log, those log will also appear over here. But it's, it's all there. If you have a Studio Pro license, you could see all of these options. And this output panel is, 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 is there in, in all other studios too. Okay, sure, sure. So simply, I mean, Let's say you want to move this this item from top to to bottom. Just plug it out, okay. And when you plug it, you see multiple options are appearing over here. So you you hover uh, where you want to place this window, okay. It will go there. Let's say if I want to place it over here, I'll say here. Even I don't want to plug it with my editor, but but at the very bottom. So I'll do it here. So now this is here. Similar to that, all the other things. Let's say the the properties. Right, property window, I don't want to see it at the left side, but at the, sorry, right side, but at the left side. So I'll say like, okay, I'll have it here. I'll have it here. Now, if you see it is here, now it's, it's two pan. No, I don't want to like do this, but I would like to have it in the, this way, okay? So now if you see, they have uh, three, three tabs here, vertical tabs. So it's a pretty simple, uh, like like other other IDs, .NET IDs. If you have worked on or Selenium IDs, you have worked on, or or even I mean, Intel J. It's pretty similar. Okay. 
is there any any other question guys indra ravi no but okay perfect hope this uh, this is of some help i mean you would have got some idea about how we can leverage this this uh, suit for uh, our automating our tests of rpa robots i believe that though it's a licensed product but definitely there is a value of using it right and again it is also going to consume a little bit of effort to write the test cases but again once you write it this is this is really an asset for you for the future which will save a lot of energy and effort in the future if your bot is going to be there for years i'm i'm, I'm very sure I I am working in such cases where some of my bots are running for almost more than three years, and they have been gone through multiple changes. And the real challenge is when there is a change, we have no clue if other parts are impacted or not, and we we don't really you know spend that amount of time and energy to validate each and every time manually because it's just a manual effort. It's a really manual effort, and it's very error prone. and that is why this this offering of ui path where you could automate the entire entire suit entire automation that you have built right and that could be saved on your orchestrator and with the help of test manager if you have that that i mean that is even stronger uh, representation and control over test cases is going to save a lot of lot of time and energy and it will give you very very good quality automation for future and your your automation will be very reliable and you could find you know errors and issues very early in the stage rather than you know when there would be a case of that type then we will realize okay i mean this was also an impact of that change we didn't realize and that is why if you really know the history of the the automated testing was the same reason it was a ultimately the whole idea of it i mean in this in this series by by the end of the series i will also talk about this entire ci cd thing so like how we can implement uh, automated testing and automated uh, automated deployment right once there is a commit it it should trigger the the automated test cases and it will tell the developer okay i mean there are some uh, test cases which has failed you may like to see that what has uh, i mean what went wrong with with those so that's the ultimate idea but to start with i wanted to cover the basic or the foundation of how we can we can start writing test cases what all the, the prerequisites are the studio what all kind of license we need and how uh, what are some of the the outstanding feature which we can use to start testing or writing test cases for simple xaml files okay so i think if uh, there is nothing from uh, you guys then i may like to conclude this discussion or our session thank you very much for being in the call guys thank you very much bye bye take care